morning, everybody. Uh, it's time for another chapter of Maniac McGee. I am ready to go. This book is really getting to a good part, and I'm excited. Uh, so yesterday we had chapters 27 and 28. We did two because they were pretty short. Today we are going to do, I think, 20, yeah, 29 and 30 because they're both pretty short, too. So we last left... Maniac McGee and Grayson, the old man, in the back of the band shell. Grayson, for the first time, decided, oh, I was just going to sleep in the band shell with Maniac McGee. So they are good to go. Our story picks up chapter 29. <clears throat> for most of November, Winter toyed with two mills, whispered in its ear, tickled it under the chin. On Thanksgiving Thursday, Winter kicked it in the stomach, but that didn't stop the old man and the boy from joining the 10,000 who thronged to the stadium on the boulevard to see the traditional high school football game. The Arctic air laid panes of ice over the crayfish edge pools of Stony Creek. The effect was the opposite on human noses. Maniacs and Graysons ran like faucets and not a handkerchief in sight. They deputized their sleeves and grabbed handfuls of napkins from the refreshment stand. Two Mills won the game thanks to a last-minute 73-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Dennehy to James Hands Down. From the instant his old trash-talking sandlot pals cradled the ball in his long brown fingers, Maniac was jumping on his seat screaming trash at hands pursuers every step to the goal line and glancing about to make sure Mrs. Beale wasn't hearing. By the time they got back to the baseball room, they were nearly frozen. But the freeze was good, for it made the warmth of the little apartment all the more welcome. Within 15 minutes, the space heater had the place positively tropical, while in the toaster oven, their five-pound Thanksgiving chicken was already beginning to brown. A pair of hot plates and a squad of pots were pressed into action, and by mid-afternoon, the two were sitting down to a feast of roast chicken, gravy, cranberry sauce, applesauce, spaghettios, raisins, pumpkin pie, and butterscotch crimpets. Maniac thought of Thanksgiving pasts, of sitting around a joyless table, his aunt and uncle as silent and lifeless as the mammoth bird they gnawed on. He said his grace, dear God, we want to take this opportunity to thank you for the best Thanksgiving dinner we've ever had. Well, I've ever had. I guess I shouldn't speak for my friend Grayson. He peeked across the table at Grayson. Grayson, he whispered, is this your best one too? The old man opened one eye and shrugged. Don't know. Ain't tasted it yet. Maniac glared, rolled his eyes upward, hissed, Grayson? The old man flinched. Uh, yeah. He squinted one eye at the chicken. Yeah, I guess it is. The best? Maniac prompted. The best. Maniac went on. And we want to thank you for this warm house, and for our own little family here, and for Grayson learning to read. He's already read 13 books, as I'm sure you already know. And one more thing, if you could find some way to let the Beale family know I'm wishing them a happy Thanksgiving, I'd really appreciate it. They're the ones on 728 Sycamore Street, in case there's any other Beals around. Amen. Amen, said Grayson. They stuffed themselves silly, then collapsed and listened to the polka music. Grayson had brought over a record player a week before, along with his entire music collection. 31 polka records. Grayson loved polkas. Of course, one cannot listen to polka music for long before getting up and dancing, which is what the two Thanksgivingers did as soon as their bloated stomachs allowed. They danced and they laughed. Record after record, whether it was polka that they danced is another question. It was nearly dark 
both of them having re-collapsed when Maniac said, Is there any paint around? I guess so, said Grayson. What for? You'll see. Can you get some and a brush? The old man dragged himself up. What color? How about black? Five minutes later, the old man was back. Got brown, that do? Fine, Maniac said. <clears throat> he opened a can, stirred the paint, put a jacket on, grabbed a brush, and went outside. Grayson followed. He watched the kid paint on the outside of the door. Careful strokes. One, zero, one. Maniac stepped back, admiring his work. 101, he proclaimed. 101 Banshell Boulevard. Aw, Maniac's got a new address with Grayson. So good. Okay, chapter 30. Another really, really short one, so we'll read this one too. Ooh, it's really short. Look at that. Literally. Bonk, that's it. <clears throat> chapter 30. If Thanksgiving was wonderful, Christmas was paradise. By now, Grayson had officially moved out of the Y and into 101 Banshell Boulevard. Thanks to his long acquaintanceship with the locker room attendant, he and Maniac were privileged to continue using the Y's shower facilities at their pleasure. For decoration outside, they nailed a wreath to the door. There was only one small window, but it had no sill to hold a candle, so some spray snow had to do. Inside was another story. Santa's elves themselves would have felt at home. Strings of popcorn swooped across the ceiling. Evergreen branches flared at random, dispersing their piney aroma. Wherever there Wherever there were a few vacant square inches, something Christmassy appeared. A matchbox crutch, a porcelain Santa, a partridge in a pear tree. One day, Grayson dragged a pair of tree limbs in and started sawing away. When he was finished, a wooden reindeer stood in the room, big enough for Maniac to ride. Of course, the tree got the most attention of all. By the time the two of them finished trimming it, their tree-trimming instincts had languished for so many Christmases. Hardly a pine needle could be seen under the tinsel and balls or whatnot. In fact, though they were delighted in their efforts, the urge to trim was still full upon them. One room was simply too small to hold the spirit bursting. So they went outside and crossed the creek and tramped the woods until they came to a fine and proper evergreen. And there, their footsteps, excuse me, their footsteps muffled by the carpet of pine needles, their every breath and whispered word arrayed in frosty white, they trimmed their second tree. This time, the ornaments were nature's brilliant red and yellow necklaces of bittersweet, pungent, pine cones, wine red clusters of sumac berries, abandoned bird bodies bloats, excuse me, abandoned bird body bloats, nope, try again, abandoned bird bodied boats of milkweed, delicate thumb sized goblets of Queen Anne's lace. <laughs> wow, I absolutely butchered that last whole sentence. Let me do that again. This time, the ornaments were nature's brilliant red and yellow necklace of bittersweet pungent pine cones, wine red clusters of sumac berries, abandoned bird bodied boats of milkweed, and delicate thumb sized goblets of Queen Anne's lace. And that is the end of chapter 30. I might post another video later today that's chapter 31 because it ends on an amazing cliffhanger and I know how much you guys love that but we'll see until we see each other again I miss you stay healthy stay safe stay home I love you guys I'll talk to you soon